I think this qualifies as a happy recap, don't you? Well, hi there. I'm Ron Juckett. And, well, oops, I got to start again because I wasn't live. I think, he says the second time around, this qualifies as a happy recap. I'm Ron Juckett, and it's time for the DotCast postgame show for the 28th day of August 2017 as the Nationals defeated the Miami Marlins 11-2 to on the return of Jason Worth from the disabled list. He was gone almost, it was over two months. He was almost gone three months. Max Scherzer comes off the disabled list, pitches seven innings, strikes out 10. 63rd time in his career. He has struck out 10 in the 14th time this year. He has struck out 10 or more. Just grinding at bats from Worth and Rendon. It's everything you'd wanted to see. As Chelsea Jane said during the course of the game, it really was like watching the offense from April and May. It, it just was in full form today. And of course, Worth went down with a broken foot on, on June 4th, or that weekend anyway, in, against Oakland. So 20th time this year, the Nats have scored 10 or more runs. Think about that, 20 times. It shattered down the old franchise record set last year by six. I'd say that's pretty good. Let's go through the total, shall we? Miami falls to 66 and 64 in 13 games out of first place. Two runs, eight hits, and an error. The Nats go to 79 and 51. Two more wins, and they're guaranteed themselves a winning season. Magic number is 20. It's down to Murph. 11 runs on 13 hits, including a six run, six hit, sixth inning. Say that five times fast. 13 hits and no errors. Max Scherzer, 13 and 5 on the air. Jose Urena, who really has been a su pleasant surprise for Miami, takes a loss 12 and 6. The Nats just worked him hard, hard, hard. Howie Kendrick, 2 for 4 tonight with 3 RBIs. He had that basis clearing triple in the sixth. Matt Wieters, 3 for 4 tonight. He drove in two. Jason Work, oh my goodness, we'll talk about that home run. I'm sure you want to talk about that home run. Just an absolute earthquake to deep, deep left field. Oh, my goodness. One of the great highlights of the year. Defoe, two for four tonight. Didn't drive anyone in. So, extra base hits tonight. Kendrick with his third triple. Defoe with his fourth. Worth with his ninth homer of the year. How good is it to say that? So, they somehow stranded six, but went five for 14 with runners in scoring position. Pitching line, Scherzer, seven innings, five hits. Judo, if you're watching, and if you haven't asked yet, he did allow s over six three times so far this year. Seven innings, five hits, a run, an earned run. He walked two and struck out ten. His ERA falls to 221. Grace with a rocky eighth inning, two hits, a run it was earned, a walk and a strikeout in Solis. How about Sammy Solis? He didn't give up the seeing eye single. But he did strike out two. So 100 pitches for 69 strikes for Scherzer, 28 pitches for Grace for 18 strikes, and Solis, 14 for 11. $20,000 and change had um, actually went to that game a couple hundred thousand We'll claim that they're at that game. Uh, let's see. Uh, and, of course, Seth. Oh, I'm sorry. We'll start with Seth's dog passed away at 15 today. I'm sorry to hear that, Seth. My condolences. Uh, I forgot about that. Let's talk about with uh, with Max pitching to Stanton. Yeah, it was uh, a ground out and two strikeouts, including one at 96 swinging. Didn't really do all that well with Yelich and Ozuna. But in the battle of the irresistible force and the immovable object, I uh, certainly just absolutely crushed it. Uh, Max did today, and, and putting a damper on there. Frankie W. I haven't talked to you before. Welcome to the show. Worth almost did hit that on the concourse. That ball was an absolute rainmaker. Really, really, really just hammered far and right down the line, and it just changed the whole dynamic of the game. 
uh, and just as, as I said on Twitter during the game, that really is one of the highlights of the year. He's come back after almost three months gone, and on his second at bat, just absolutely obliterates one. Seth says, yeah, they're preparing for three to four, three to five inches of rain down in Virginia Beach tomorrow. I know that tomorrow's game could be in question as the remnants of Harvey kind of make their way. They still haven't left Texas yet, for crying out loud, but they're starting to make their way up the East Coast. So uh, hopefully all stays well and dry down there for you, Seth. So all in all, I mean, this, this was an effort. This was a statement game. Some of you were kind of nervous about the Marlins coming in. If the Marlins had swept the lead, would only be nine, and panic would ensue and all that. And so you get you get Scherzer back from the disabled list, and he goes out and does immaculate things. You might get Turner back tomorrow because he'll be at sixty days if they don't play tomorrow. He should be back on on Wednesday. And it just as as Chelsea said, this really looked like. Um, it, it this really looked like something from earlier in the season when they could score runs at will. The one, of the, the other thing that struck me tonight about Worth is, is it in after the home run he ground out an eleven pitch at bat. Rendon came back down tonight from an 0-2 count in at bat and and walked. I mean, this is what the Nats do so well is they just grind out at bats and tire out pitches. Seth corrects me. It's corrects me. Corrects me. It's tropical storm Irma, and I hope that um, hope that you stay okay there. So just it just everything that you had wanted to see tonight from the Nationals in a game where. You weren't sure what the Marlins were going to do because the Marlins have won, I believe, 14 out of 16 coming into this game. Um, and it was no contest. It was absolutely no contest. And you know what? I like that. Let's see if anything is being said on Twitter. No, let's go to the scoreboard. It's a rather abbreviated scoreboard. Tonight, Atlanta... Losers to Philadelphia again, six to one. Baltimore beats Seattle seven to six. Cubs lead the Pirates five nothing in the bottom of the seventh. Shout out to their organist. I can't remember his name, but this is the twenty fifth hundred twenty fifth hundred consecutive game played by their organist at Wrigley Field. That's a pretty good run. Tigers lead the Rockies four to three, top the fourth. And that's it. That's all that matters for the playoffs. It's a pretty quiet Monday in the majors. And as Seth points out, yes, Yvonne Rodriguez and Tim Raines have been officially inducted in the Nats Ring of Honor. Raines threw out the first pitch. Rodriguez caught it. And they named a, fee, a practice field today, I believe in Northern Virginia, for Yvonne Rodriguez. Remember, Rod Pudge played the last – Full season with the Nats, and of course Tim Raines played for the, the forefathers for the Nats, um, the Montreal Expos, and deserved to be in the Hall of Fame a long time before he actually got in. <clears throat> there. Uh, last night, I don't see Judo tonight, but last night he asked if you'll be interested in this question, Seth, whether we, you know, do we become less of a fan after watching? After because we try to cover be the objective covering these games. And tonight it was one of those reasons like, no, it was a great night to be a fan. How could you not be excited by what you saw? Um just I mean worth coming back and doing what he did, and then Scherzer dominating like he did. I mean, yeah, I mean, these are fun things to watch. It's why you watch all these games. Just absolutely great, great deal of fun to cover. He says the Nationals are crushing team, Seth does. Can't wait to see if we meet up with the Dodgers in the playoffs. <laughs> you, I'm not, you're not going to get me to say they're better than the Dodgers right now. But, right, but, man, it should be entertaining. It really should be entertaining. And uh, let's see, you know, what happens when Turner comes back. I haven't heard anything about Harper, Harper's possible return. Uh, who else won? Um, 
someone else was coming back. Uh, Eddie Romero is doing back-to-back -back rehab stints in Syracuse, too. Now, remember, Friday the rosters go up to 40, or potentially up to 40. So the roster gymnastics will be pretty much over at that point. Uh, and I, I'd imagine that Eric Fetty will be up for the rest of the year at that point um, from Syracuse, and hopefully Romero will be up then. And so it'll be a full complement, and we'll see. But I'm not, I'm, I am haven't heard anything from Harper. I, I think they would like to get him back in the next couple of weeks. Do I think Adam Wheaton will be back? No. I don't think they'll clear him, Seth. Uh, he's been taking batting practice. You don't want that injury to pop back up because you lose him all next year. Because it was a tear, it was a double tear as opposed to the bone bruise for for Harper, you just need to make sure that's 100%. Maybe, maybe for the World Series, because then at that point you're stretching out into the end of October. I believe if the series goes seven, it would end on November 1st. But that's really the only, oh, and he asked us, as I say about that, I think that's the only, the only series that he may make it back for, and even that I don't think would be good. You know, they're kind of talking about him being like Kyle Schwarber, but you'd with the you know, minor league seasons ending, I mean, yeah, he'll do some extended spring training down in West Palm Beach, but I just, I just don't see it. Besides, you have Taylor playing really well right now. You, you the offense. I mean, look, the offense has put ten on a team that's contending for a wild card spot. Uh, you know, you don't really want to risk your further injury. I mean, if it's possible that he can't re-injure it by playing. Or doing pulling an 88 Kirk Gibson and just being able to swing and maybe run and not field, you could do that. But I, I that's pushing it. That's pushing it. If you ask me. All right, let's take a look at the minor league scoreboard. If you're wondering why I'm looking over, I'm watching the third set of uh, Sheriff Ova and Holop from the US, first round of the U.S. Open, a final matchup in the first round. Okay, Syracuse beat. Lehigh Valley tonight, 7-3. To As Neil Rogers struck out 10 in that game for Syracuse. 3-2, and two, the 3-5-8 ERA. Again, another one of those under-the-radar moves that might actually pay off for the Nats if they bring him up. Soto with two home runs for Syracuse. He's now hit 12 on the year. And Matt Skoll with his 11th. In 12 innings, a walk-off win for Harrisburg overall. Akron, self with the win, 3-2 and two on the year. As Harrisburg goes to 58-75, Auburn, doubleheader split tonight. Williamsport wins the first game 2-1. Cousins with a loss. He goes to 2-2 two two with a 2-8-1 ERA. But Auburn gets the shutout in game two. A two-hitter is a matter of fact. Tatro goes to 2-1 on the year. McKinney picks up his second save, and Pryor picks up his first home run. Let's see who combined on that for the... So Jonathan Pryor hit the homer at Jackson Tatro and Jeremy McKinney combined on the two-hitter. Tatro, five innings of one-hit ball. He struck out six. And McKinney, of two innings of one-hit ball. And he struck out one. Gulf Coast League tonight, or today, the Nats beat the Cardinals 11-1 in Jupiter. Stockinger, Stokinger. It's the win 2 0 with a 4 7 3 ERA, and, and, and Antuna with a home run is first. So, Seth asked, Did I watch the Nets game back when they lost 100 games in back to back seasons? No, not really. Um, I've covered a variety of different sports and a variety of different teams, so no, I, I didn't see that. I've always had a soft spot spot for the franchise because they were in Montreal. I mean, they were the closest franchise to me. And uh, even though I grew up a Red Sox fan, I mean, it, it didn't root against the Expos. They were in a different league. Uh, Seth says, I'm so blessed to have the Nats good because I remember watching them losing and getting destroyed. It's just amazing how well the team has changed through the years. Uh, we talked about this a little bit during the game on Twitter. I, you know, the you obviously needed to do make the trade for the bullpen three, Kinsler, uh, Doolittle, and, and Manson. 
but the big you know, the under the radar deals this winter to get Adam Land, and I mean they stole Howie Kendrick from the Philadelphia Phillies. I mean they just get when when I keep saying if you read my stuff that if you it's the little piece of puzzle pieces that make a championship team. I mean that's what Mike Rizzo does. He doesn't go out there and get, and make the big splashy trades. He goes out there and gets the the little pieces, and they all happen to work. Am I concerned about Kinsler? No, I think he's had pitched 13 times, Seth, since the trade in 26 days, and I, I think there was a little bit of overwork. Um, he goes out there and gets lit up again, uh, maybe, but no, I really think he was. I really think it was just a, a just a lot of work. I think they will continue to mix and match relievers to over the next month as as the playoffs become closer and closer to see if they had the right combination. Um, it, I mean, it was so least gave you a great ninth inning. Uh, just the seeing eye hit past Murphy and struck out too. If Romero can come back through and harness it, you know, continue to harness his arsenal, you know, the Nats have a deep bullpen. You didn't think I'd ever say that, did you, Seth? The Nats have a deep bullpen. Um, so, no, I'm not worried about Kinsler. I think they can kind of give guys enough rest now as players start to come back to, to give everyone enough work. But if you keep, if they keep putting on these five, six, seven run shows, you know, Eric, uh, Edwin Jackson pitches tomorrow if it doesn't rain, and then it's Strasburg on Wednesday. So, your starting pitching just sets up so much that you know. I think you know, I, I think that it, that it would be good. You know, I think the Nats are in pretty good shape. If the Nats and Red Sox played in the World Series, who would I root for? I work. For, I cover the Washington Nationals. I wouldn't root against the Red Sox, but you know, I I've been a fan. I got to cover their last one, the the Red Sox last World Series in thirteen. Wouldn't be disappointed if the Red Sox won, but I'd be tickled. So, you know, after spending, after being, I'll be with District on deck a year uh, on the seventh, as a matter of fact, and I'd just be absolutely tickled for the Nats if they won. There'd be no, I, I've covered them for a year, and so you, you get, you root for the teams that you cover. There, there is a committal answer. Now, if they play the Dodgers, I'm playing. I'm rooting for the Red Sox. So, all right, what did we do today? We did, we drew, who will be with you tomorrow, weather depending, uh, did the five storylines for the series. And Ricky wrote on, thank you, Seth. This is still got a couple of about 10 days. And Ricky wrote about Brandon Snyder and the wonderful year he's having in, for Syracuse. He has 22 home runs this year for the Chiefs. You got to wonder if they can make room for him somewhere. On the 40, the problem is he plays first base. And first base is already pretty much covered with the resurgence of Ryan Zimmerman and, and of course, Adam Lind. Um, but you got to wonder if they'll do something for that for the 40. All right. Well, I think we have pretty much everything covered. As I said, Drew Douglas will be back with you tomorrow, and I will be with you Wednesday for the 4 o'clock game if it's rained out tomorrow. You too, Seth. We'll figure out another plan for Wednesday. Give this video a like and subscribe on YouTube because we like you. Uh, follow us or give us a like on Facebook. District on Deck is how you do that. On Twitter, it's district. It's at District on Deck, and of course, DistrictOnDeck.com. So, the final score once again: a big one. The Nationals eleven. The Marlins, too. The magic number is 20. I'm Ron Juckett. Good night.